So this will be a quick video just to show how to get Reactor working with an input device, uh, namely a MIDI keyboard controller. And the first thing to know is that I'm running Reactor in standalone mode, which is definitely the best way to set up at first before you start using it as a plugin. Uh, I always make sure I've got this edit button clicked so that I'm not in player mode. Uh, something that's initially confusing about Reactor are the different modes that it will open in. It often opens in player mode and it says player here. I can choose different instruments to simply play. But in order to change settings, you really need to be in edit mode. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at my library that I have installed on my hard drive and pick a synth to play. So I'm going to look at my library and rather than look at the uh, default installed library, I'm going to look at my personal library, which is somewhere else on the hard drive. And you can set up all these locations in settings. I'm not going to really talk about that now. And you can see that I've decided to organize all my stuff in, well, like kind of a huge number of categories here. So how about I look at my Quadra and I have a customized version I made called a Quinty. So this is my version of an ARP Quadra with some of the limitations removed. And it sounds quite nice. But how do I make sure I can actually play it with a keyboard? I've got a launch key mini plugged in. Let me look at my settings. Uh, not here, however, but here. Audio and MIDI settings. You have an audio panel. I've got a, uh, a Fireface uh, USB using the ASIO driver, which is a lovely way to work when you can. Sample rate 48K, doesn't really matter that much what it is. It'll show you some really useful information here about your latency. Uh, I'm not pushing the bleeding edge here. 128 samples is not a lot, um, but not a little, <laughs> it's somewhere in between. But MIDI, this will show you all the devices that it's uh, understood are on your system. If you plug in a device and it does not show up here, Close Reactor and open it again, just to be sure that it scans your system. If it's still not here, there's something wrong with your driver settings. But you can see that once again, my RME device has uh, two MIDI ports. I have the Launch Key MIDI MIDI, MIDI Launch Key Mini MIDI, uh, and there's this other weird second MIDI in uh, that it that it does, which is something about controlling. Um, through their own software controlling the keyboard so i just have that turned off so the only, thing, the only thing i have turned on to prevent confusion is this midi controller but you could have 11 midi controllers at the same time if you wanted so we make sure that's on that's all we need to do now how do we map the midi from the controller to what the software is doing well first of all if i play It really should just work by default. If it doesn't, then you need to start going into your settings here and seeing what's going on. So if we switch to the properties and I've clicked on the top bar here. So these are the properties of the instrument as a whole. If I was to click here, it would change because now I'm changing the properties of this one fader. Here, I'm changing the properties of this radio button set, but here, clicking at the top, I'm changing the settings of the instrument as a whole. And if I look at the connect tab, so these are all different tabs you can look at, then I have MIDI in. External, all, it's defaulting to, but if I change it to here, I can play. Yep, same thing. The channel it's coming in on again, I could set up Omni uh, or any specific number of channels. What I'm doing is clicking and dragging here to set this. So I had it just set on channel one. And you can also set it to receive internal MIDI from some other instrument or part of an instrument. And this is how you can have a sequencer instrument in Reactor play a synth instrument in Reactor. And things can get quite sophisticated here. That is an understatement when it comes to Reactor. Um, I've made quite a few instruments that are basically entire tracks that play themselves uh, with me manipulating different controls. Um, that's how I do a lot of my music. Actually, it's just live sessions played out of Reactor, not 
anything to do with the DAW at all. Okay, so I don't want anything selected here because that might just create confusion. You can set note ranges. So you could easily use the same controller if you had a big enough one and the bass could go to one instrument and the treble part could go to another instrument. Uh, you can offset the notes. There's a lot you can do here. Now, when it comes to MIDI output, you can also, um, if your instrument is sending MIDI out, you can also determine where that will go externally. So once again, you could set up sequencer instruments in Reactor that play hardware instruments outside your computer. And finally, for those of you who enjoy OSC, uh, which I don't have turned on currently, you can actually configure uh, OSC IDs, source and targets down here. Now that's all there is to it. You should be able to just play your instrument, uh, play your keyboard or whatever other sort of controller you have, and it should work. So this instrument's only using the poly, uh, sorry, this preset on this instrument is only using the poly and the lead sounds. So let me click on this. And if I right click, I can learn any external devices connected. Now you can also in this panel change things manually, but this is the easy way. Right click on a control, any control, hit learn. And then the next thing I do in my hardware, there we go. I'm tweaking, you can see the mouse is over here. I'm tweaking a knob on the hardware and it's controlling this. And then the, say the lead uh, fader, learn, there we go. That's the next one. Now you'll see other faders are moving <laughs> because other faders are set to the same controller. So let, let's look at poly first. You can now see over in the connect panel, it's responding to note or CC number. It's actually CC number 11, right? Because controller number, CC number 11. If I had set it to note, I could actually control it with a note on the keyboard, which would be really weird for a fader. And I can even use an aftertouch um, message to control that fader. But in this case, nine times out of 10, if it's a knob or a fader or a button, you wanna use a CC value, so controller 11. So I move that, cool. But look, this one's moving too, rather badly, I might add. If I click on this, it's also set to number 11. So yes, you can control more than one, um, part of your interface with the same uh, knob or whatever, but generally you don't want that. So why don't I set this to, um, I don't know, can I just set it to zero and have it not do that? Probably, that's better. Now, if I was to save this instrument, all of these settings here are saved with it. So that's also important to know that your MIDI mapping of your controller to your instrument gets saved with the instrument. If for some reason you wanted to control this Quinty uh, with more than one mapping and you wanted to do that regularly, then you would need to save different copies of the instrument. But I can't really see that being something most human beings would want to do because you really want to learn which knob does what on your hardware. The last thing I should mention is if it helps with debugging, you can get a list of the MIDI that's coming in the door by looking at this tab, which says controllers. And this shows you, um, uh, can I make a bit more room here? I can make a bit more room here. This shows you where the controllers are currently mapped. So if we turn on auto down here, then, you know, when I move this controller, you can see it's flashing. So I know CC11 is being received. And if I hit some keys, you know, those come in as well. And uh, we can see which keys have been have been hit. It gives us a bit of a history. So it actually, it, it tr treats the notes a bit differently than the CCs. The CCs is listing all the ones that are assigned. It's not doing that for notes because of course, all notes within the range are potentially assigned, but it shows us which ones we've played recently. And if you want to get rid of those, you hit clean and it, and it tidies that up. Okay, so I hope that this little tutorial video has helped and helped to use Reactor. Reactor really is one of the unsung heroes of the software world. It used to cost a fair bit of money. Now it only costs 200 clams. It goes on sale for half that. So for $100 or $99 or euros or whatever, you can get what is possibly the best soft synth 
in existence in the sense that it's not just one synth, it's not a hundred synths, it's several thousand synths and sequencers and effects processors. I do basically, I've done all my work for 20 years in Reactor. I sometimes use a few other externals, but there's really no need. And it's the most incredible value for money.